This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Wow, that is so cool. And so since you just, you understand the protocol as the security researcher and you just fill in the blanks and boom, it's been kismetified. Mostly, yeah. I, hopefully it's that simple. The, the Ubertooth plugin, uh, so uh, with with the, the development kismet and the development Ubertooth plugin, you get uh, all your 802.11 and your Bluetooth in one network list. It's sortable. Uh, you can view the details on it and all just as one, one list in the GUI. So as a project, is it because like, well, you've finished Wi-Fi? It's like, have you come to a point in the development cycle where you're like, oh, they added every feature as as far as Wi-Fi is concerned, and now it's just like got a great architecture for stuff that does RF? Or is there more that you can do with Wi-Fi that's just still on the list? I, I think there's definitely still more to do in Wi-Fi. Um, there's there's a lot of user interface type things that could be done that hopefully will now be simpler to, simpler to do. Mm -hmm. uh, where you, um, Trying to implement other things with Wi-Fi tracking too, where it like tracks time ranges, so you can go, you know, follow this client and tell me every network you've observed them connecting to, and it tells you, you know, they connected to this one for ten minutes, this one for ten minutes, this one for five minutes, that kind of thing. So hopefully there'll be more IDS-centric stuff like that, or user user monitoring stuff. And so, what brought you from Wi-Fi to uh, Zigbee? Uh, it's <laughs> just another another thing. Um, I think a couple years ago, someone asked about, hey, what about Zigbee? And I went... What's Zigbee? <laughs> yeah, I pretty much went, I, I, I don't know. And the biggest stumbling block since then is I don't have any Zigbee. Mm. Like, until recently, I didn't even have any real PCAPs of Zigbee in the wild that yeah. you could I could refer to, so you know, it's hard to go, okay, the spec says it's got this, but does well, it? Is, is this is this like the Ubertooth pack, where uh, a path where it's like, well, why don't we audit uh, Bluetooth? And it's like, well... Do we have anything that can sniff that? You know, is it like that? Yeah, it, it's similar to that. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that could sniff Zigbee, but none of it was easily reproducible for a lot of people. Um, so is it like kind of like the, uh, the the Bluetooth problem where like, oh, this one specific manufacturer has a, a Bluetooth dongle that'll do this thing and you can get these modes, but not all of them. Is it, is it like that kind of thing? Uh, it was a lot of that. And then there's uh, a lot of the projects using it used, uh, like Travis uses uh, the Telos modes which you can't get really anymore. Hmm. Like you can't go out and buy them, at least I haven't been able to find them easily. Um, his recommendation at his talk at Hope was uh, to contact a professor and it's because they were used heavily for research. So you can definitely get them that way. But if you don't have that access, you can't. Um, and then Josh was working, uh, uh, Josh Wright was working on the, uh, the Killer B, which uses the Atmel USB stick, which is easy to get, but then you need a $500 programmer. And so your solution here is the Kisby you don't need a $500 programmer. No. Um, so the whole board is open source hardware. The software is open source. The firmware is open source. The Android app is open source. Um, the revision you're holding was designed to be hand, solder, hand, bleh, hand soldered. Hand soldered easily. Yeah. Um, you can do it with a hot plate or if, I mean, it's 0603 and bigger. So if you're steady enough and familiar with surface mount. And 0603, that's, you're talking about the size of these little components. Um, and you're right, they're not, they're not too big. In fact, I guess you've gotten really good at soldering these, I take it. Tell me about your project. Uh, was, this, was this Kickstarter or outside of that? Uh, nope, that was just, uh, I put it together. Um, I don't like Kickstarter for this model because if one of those chips becomes unavailable, and has a three month lead time, which almost happened to me. Um, I'd, uh, I was actually building a bunch of them for, for Shark Fest, the Wire Shark Conference. And I got ready to order them and it, the, the radio chip was showing a late July lead time. Uh, you know, th that's the other fun thing when like, suddenly, you know, there's more and more hardware hacking going on. And like us hackers learning like, whoa, what's, what's lead time? What's an MOQ? What's all of these different, you know, uh, things when it comes to components but I mean at the same time it's so like heartwarming because this is like Apple IIe kind of like all over again uh, but for hacking you know well I guess I was hacking but you know what I'm saying for like penetration testing and stuff so what is what does this board actually do I mean I get it's that it's a Zigbee radio uh, what's the secret sauce so it's Zigbee on one end and then the other end is USB and Bluetooth 
So you can either talk to it over USB or Bluetooth or both simu both simultaneously if you really want. Um, so you can hook it up to phones, uh, Android or the Nokia 900. Uh, you can't hook it up to an iPhone. Theoretically, if you have a rooted iPhone and you, you could write a custom Bluetooth app for it. Mm -hmm. I haven't really looked into it because I don't have an iPhone. So yeah, it kind of falls in the don't care bucket. Oh, yeah, yeah that scratcher, uh, scratchers hack their own itches is what I was trying to say, actually. Uh, that's a... Uh, <laughs> that's that's kind of awesome, um, and so the USB is that for like host mode to the Android, or or do you Bluetooth to the Android? Uh, the the main model would be Bluetooth to Android, and then uh, you just hook up a USB battery pack to it, okay, uh, to power the 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 uh, the, so the So the USB is just for battery. Uh, you can it'll it'll talk uh, uh, USB uh, serial, mm -hmm. so you can hook it up to a PC. And use it that way. You could hook it up to an Android host mode. There's no code to support that. I wouldn't necessarily do it that way. It's it's kind of kludgy. Um, and so I guess the the point is, you plug this into your laptop, or you battery power it, and and hook it up to your Android phone. And so, is there like a Kismet version for Android that this interfaces with, or, or does it have its own custom thing right now? Uh, right now, it's got its own custom thing where it does. Uh, it, it, it's got a map view, and it'll do channel hopping, and it'll do uh, GPS with the Android, and it'll log uh, log to the SD card, and then you can pull it off and turn those into PCAPs. Okay, so much. I mean, basically, the thing that you want to do with Kismet, you know, you want to search, you want to capture, you want to then, you know, that becomes part of the one of the first parts of your process of you know then analyzing it, whether that being like a T Shark or a Wire Shark or whatever you use. Um, I'm not super familiar with Zig Zigbee as a protocol. I know that it's a, it's an IEEE standard. I know that it falls within 802. something. Um, but can you explain to me and the viewers that are are already familiar with Wi-Fi as we all know and love uh, how this relates to that and and what some of the subtle differences are? Like like are there even channels? Like how does this, this work? Uh, so one thing is we keep calling it Zigbee. It's tech, the, technically what it, that, what the Kisby will do is uh, 802.15.4, mm -hmm. which is the the overarching standard. And then unlike with Wi-Fi where it's all 802.11, 802.11 and Wi-Fi are equivalent. Yeah. Although the Wi-Fi branding company. Well, Wi-Fi is just a trademark term from the Wi-Fi Alliance. That means 802.11, pick a letter, B-A-N-G-A-C. Yeah, and that it's been compliance tested. Uh, but with uh, 802.15.4, that's the base radio protocol. And then on top of that, there's higher level protocols. So like Zigbee is a trademarked alliance of companies that, and so Zigbee then is like, a, it's got a mesh topology and a star topology. And it, it's, it's, it's kind of like TCP on top of 802.11. Or like, or like mesh networking, how there, there can be like subtle standards like WDS, for instance, actually isn't a uh, Wi-Fi uh, certified or Wi-Fi alliance certified standard. And yet it does kind of mesh networking ish stuff. Um, it, it are what is part of are like the management frames and control frames handled by the 802, you know, the IEEE side, and then the vendor adds their own kind of datagrams over that, or, or what? Zigbee is super limited. Uh, the maximum packet size, including framing headers, is 127. You guys know how I feel about domain names. They're essential for showcasing your portfolio, your business, or blog. I remember my first website. It was on my ISP's geo.com slash my username, and I don't even remember it. Nobody's going to remember that. What we remember is .com. It's the best. It's globally understood and immediately lends credibility. Best part is .coms are totally affordable at domain.com. The whole Hack5 crew are over on domain.com because they're the best. Easy to use, reliable, they don't gouge or annoy with irrelevant upsells. Plus, you can't go wrong with a company that has a human approach to business. Just tweet them at domain.com and see their customer support is a breath of fresh air. So get this, the domain.com guys are huge Hack5 fans and they want to hook you up with a great offer. Get 15% off their already affordable domain names and web hosting when you use the coupon code HACK5 at checkout. That's 15% and big savings at domain.com. So don't forget to use the coupon code HAK5 when you think domain names, think domain.com.